All right, so this is probably uh, the most extensive uh, Shiny app that we have um, in, in, this, in this book. Um, and it's the Shiny app that, that kind of discusses Markov chains. Uh, so it's going to allow you to get more familiar with what a Markov chain is, what a transition matrix is, um, what it just means to run a Markov chain. Um, and I, th I think this is a really good way to, to bridge uh, sort of the end of theoretical probability, which we're learning about, uh, to sort of more applied concepts. Uh, so we, we have a lot of different sliders here, number of states, uh, n-step transition matrix, etc. The first thing I want to talk about is MC type. Um, so first we're going to start with uh, Gamble's Ruin as our uh, Markov chain type. Recall we learned Gamble's Ruin is like sort of this process, this random walk where like A has this money and he's betting and he, he either wins each round or loses each round, you know, probably P and Q and... It's independent rounds. Um, it's sort of bouncing around like that. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna consider that we're gonna set set the number of states equal to fifteen. Just we have this nice big Markov chain. This just dictates you know number of states in the Markov chain. That's not too bad. And I think we're gonna start um, in location seven. So this is basically saying you know I have a fifteen state chain. I want to start in, in state number seven. And we're gonna run this chain for a hundred steps. And we'll we'll consider this n step slider in a second. So when I hit run the chain, it's going to uh, essentially give me a lot of output. Running the chain basically means, okay, just put the chain in location fit in, in state seven, seven of 15. And, you know, according to the transition matrix defined by Gamma's Ruin, so Gamma's Ruin is, uh, you know, in this case, we're doing a uh, Gamma's Ruin where P is one half. So it's one half probability each way. So According to the transition matrix of gamma ruin, one half in each direction, just allow a particle to bounce around. So allow a particle to bounce around 100 times in this Markov chain. So we hit run the chain, and we get this output. So let's step through this output one by one. First, I think it's the transition matrix. Um, this is a really great, I think this is a really great graph because it helps you to visualize what gamma ruin looks like. So um, heat here, like the, the, the more red something is, uh, the, the, the denser, like the more probability it is. So here we have state I on the left, right? It's just like a regular transition matrix, state I, state J. You can think of like, this is one, you know, this is one, one. So this box gives the probability of going from state one to state one. And this box is probably going from state one to state, or sorry, state two to state one. So you can think of it as, as this grid. We just didn't draw the numbers. And you know, the ijth entry, so maybe this is the ijth entry, is the probability of going from i to j. And, you know, looking at this, it kind of makes sense. Like if we're anywhere, if we're in the middle of this chain, right? So let's say we're at state i, we either go to state i minus one, or yeah, we go to the, you know, the earlier state with probably 50%, and we go up probably 50%. And it's like, we don't stay at the state, right? Because this diagonal is, is blank. But we either go up or down with, with equal probabilities. And then when we get to the end, if we get to state one, it's an absorbing state, right? The game is over. Uh, he has zero dollars. So, you, you know, you can think of this as state zero. So he goes from zero to zero, 100%. And the same way if he wins, if he gets to end, he goes to zero, zero, 100%. So, you know, looking at it pictorially, I think is a, a pretty good way to think about, you know, this chain. Okay. Next, we're going to move to this graph, the top left, empirical distribution, the time spent in each state. So in this, in this example, we said we start at state 7 in 15 states, and we run the chain 100 times. This graph gives you the heat, which is like the, uh, the empirical time spent in each state. So here we ran 100 times, right? It clearly, we spent the most time in state one, right? Like we spent probably second most in state three. It's a little darker, state four. But it looks like what happened was we started at seven. We kind of bounced around when state three was two and then got absorbed by state one and then pretty early on and then just stayed there, right? So if we, you know, if we decrease the number of st uh, states to 10, we ran it again. Now we started at seven and we kind of like wandered around. We haven't gotten absorbed yet, right? Like we're still we're still somewhere around here. We, we started at seven. We bumped around. We were at 10 a lot. We haven't gotten to one or fifteen, so that's what this empirical distribution time in each state means. If we increase the number of steps to a thousand, what do we think is going to happen? Well, if we run this a thousand times, we're only certainly going to get absorbed, and then we're going to, you know, stay in that absorption for a while. So we should either have one or fifteen, like you know, the zero state, the state where he has zero money, or the state where he has all the money, um, be really red. So let's see what happens. And yeah, we got that right. We started in seven. We probably got to here, you know, after I don't know fifty, maybe steps and then the rest of the time we were in state one. So we were just overwhelmingly in state one. Uh, so that's that's kind of intuitive. Okay, the next is the bottom left uh, the bottom left graph. This gives the stationary distribution. In some cases though, we kind of have been working with cases where we have 
uh, a unique stationary distribution, but this is only under certain conditions, right? One of those conditions is that the Markov chain must be irreducible. And here, based on the transition matrix and our knowledge of gambler's ruin, it's clearly not irreducible, right? Like irreducible means you can get from any state to any other state. And here you can't get from state one, state zero, or, you know, the state zero, or state n to any other state. So it's not irreducible, and we don't have a unique stationary distribution. We have two stationary distributions, and they kind of make sense, right? Like it's saying, here's the first, this is one, the first stationary distribution, and it's basically saying 100% in state one. And then stationary distribution two is saying 100% in state 15. What does this mean in this context? Well, it means we either get absorbed by state one, by the, you know, by the low state, the no money state, or we get absorbed by the high money state. Those are the two kind of long run distributions of the chain, and that, that totally makes sense, okay? So finally, Let's think about the, the two-step transition matrix. Recall that if we take the transition matrix to a power, it gives us another transition matrix, the probability of transitioning from state I to state J in N steps. Here it's two steps. So you have the probability of going from, you know, um, uh, yeah, probably going from I to J in two steps is given by these values. Notice how in this case, like in the transition, the one-step transition matrix, the diagonal is, is blank, is, is zero, because you can't go from state I to state I. But here the diagonal is filled in because... You know, if you're at state I, you can go state down and then come back to your state. You know what I mean? So, it's, so it's, it, there is a chance to go return to state I in two steps. But it's zero. The, this little off diagonal is zero because from state I, you can't go to state I minus one in two steps because you either, you know, it's, it's an odd number of steps away, so you, so you can't go there. Um, so you kind of see the start to, like, fan out. The edges are still zero. They're still one, right? Like, if you go to state zero, you're going to end up there. And now we can think about, like, what if we did the 100-step transition matrix? What should we see? Well, if we run this thing for 100 times, we're probably going to get absorbed. So we should probably see, like, you know, the ends be, be very red. And that's exactly what happens. So we do end step. This is basically saying that um, this is actually also super interesting. Up, the only, like, two columns, you can kind of faintly see the middle of this is a little bit colored in, but not really. These two columns are clearly very colored in. And it's saying that, you know, if we start up here, if we start with little money, we're very likely to be absorbed in 100 states. And we're like kind of, and as we move down, we're less likely to be absorbed. If we're less likely to be absorbed here, we're more likely to be absorbed uh, here. So we start in state I, you know, probability of getting absorbed in state zero, in, in the no money state, in an all money state, and that kind of changes. You can think of these two columns as kind of adding up to one. Obviously, they don't add up to one because there's like a faint probability in here. But like, these, these are kind of compliments, right? Like, the higher, the, with the less money you start, the, prob the higher probability you get absorbed up here. The more money you start, the higher probability of getting absorbed down here. And, you know, as we let the transition matrix, as we took more steps, we, we kind of see this getting even more extreme. So that's, that's uh, kind of much everything for Gamma's Ruin. Think about if we started, what would happen, let's go this back to 10 steps. <clears throat> what would happen if we started in state one? So let's uh, let it go, run to, I think it's a little laggy. Um, there we go. So le let's let it run for 10 steps. What would happen if we started in state one? Well, if we start in state one, state one's already an absorbing state, so we're going to stay there, right? Like, we're not going to leave. Similarly, if we start in state 15, we should, we're just going to see sort of this red bar here. We're not going to leave 15. Okay. <clears throat> so this is, a, you know, a cool tool to sort of understand Markov chains even more. You could generate a random uh, Markov chain. It's being a little laggy, but this just generates a random transition matrix. Um, not a ton of intuition here. One cool thing about this is here we just have one stationary distribution. One cool thing about this is, you know, look at a, a, the n-step transition matrix for small n. So we can see it's, it's updating here. <clears throat> so here's the 11-step. Let's go. Let's do like the, the two-step. Right? This looks a little different from the transition matrix. But as we know, like rate, taking, the transition matrix to a taking the transition matrix to a power approaches the stationary distribution. And as we see, like, let's increase this to 34. <clears throat> it's updating. We should see that this is very similar to the stationary. And there you go, very similar to stationary distribution. You probably honestly couldn't even tell these apart by I. So as we take the transition matrix to a power, we, we sort of get that. So other interesting types are, uh, this is an upward absorbing chain, really similar to a gambler's ruin, but you can't get absorbed in zero state. So if you hit this, this first state, you bounce back to state two. So that's why it's upward absorbing. You bounce on the bottom, and then if you get absorbed up here, you're absorbed. So... You can kind of see this 30-step transition matrix. We you could do a 100-step. <coughs> Makes sense because in the long run, right, everything's just going to get absorbed over here. You just have a high probability of getting absorbed. There's only one stationary distribution in the long run. You know, you're going to end up in, in state 15. Um, 
Another cool chain is a reflecting chain. So here, both ends are reflecting. Uh, stationary distribution is pretty interesting. Um, all of these, the two to 14 are symmetric and they're both larger than, than one fifteen. So that's an interesting chain to think about. And finally, multi-class. I think this is probably the most interesting. So this is a, this is a chain that's not irreducible. It has two separate classes. So this is kind of one Markov chain within itself, and this is another one. <clears throat> There's no transitioning between these two classes, right? So if we start, if we think about the starting location, right? Here we're starting in state 15. We're going to spend all our time in these states. We're not going to dip below. Like even if we run this, you know, 770 times, we're not going to dip below. Um, but if we start in a state below the break, like if we start in the first class, so let's let it, let's let it run, we're only going to, you know, our empirical distribution is only going to be in, in that first class. Another thing to know is that this empirical distribution is starting to approach a stationary distribution because we're letting it run for a long time, so the amount of times that the particles stay in each state is, is pretty similar to stationary distribution. <clears throat> and again, we, we have two stationary distributions here. So this you can think of as a stationary distribution of the first class, whereas this is the stationary distribution of the second class. So two, one for each class, and then the transition matrix as well approaches this kind of two-part uh, stationary distribution. So yeah, I think this is a, probably pretty helpful to think about what a Markov chain means, running the chain, get a little bit more uh, work with Gambler's Ruin. Thinking about Gambler's Ruin as a, as a Markov process I think is pretty interesting. Thinking about the uh, n-step transition matrix, thinking about the stationary distribution and seeing that it's not always necessarily unique, especially um, in cases when the chain is not irreducible. Hopefully it gives you more practice with Markov chains and prepares you for the next step of analytical and uh, applied statistics.